So there is no doubt in today's match fishing scene that pole fishing is one of the most accurate and most favored methods of fishing. So in this learn to fish video, we're gonna run you through everything you need to know if you want to get into it. Now, let's try and get it out of the way nice and early. The hardest question I always get asked is what pole should I get? And now it's so hard to answer because everyone's situation is different. It can be very, very expensive if you look at the top range, but it doesn't have to be. So the first thing I would say is get yourself a budget and search for a pole within that range. If you go into any of our tackle shops, they will all help you out in picking the best pole for you. But basically, to break it down simply, if you're gonna do a lot of fishing, fishing a lot of matches and trying to really compete at a good level, you might wanna invest a little bit more money because you're gonna get a longer, stiffer, lighter pole, just more comfortable to use. But if you're just getting into it, you might even wanna start off with a margin pole or something like that, just to see if pole fishing is for you. Now, I fish with a Matrix MTX3. Now, I would probably say, yes, obviously it's a fair chunk of money, but it's probably in the mid price range for poles on the market today, but it really does perform at pretty much one of the best levels out there. It's a 16 meter pole and it does everything I want to do. So that is what I choose to use. But like I said, for everyone, everyone's situation is different and get yourself a price budget and look at a pole in that range. There's a few things you can expect to come with a pole. The main things basically is obviously you've got no uh, rod and reel and line. So you come with spare top kits, which you elasticate with different strengths elastic. Now, if you're fishing for bigger fish in your lake, you're gonna need a heavier elastic. So this green one here is actually a 12 to 16. So it's for probably fish ranging from, let's say three to, I'd be happy catching fish up to sort of 10, 15 pound on that, no problem. Then in here, I've got a lighter one, which is actually a eight to 12. And in there, I'd be happy catching smaller fish. So you just need a few different top kits. Most poles come with packages and you can put some different strengths in. Then you can catch different size fish when you're pole fishing. And the other thing you can expect to get normally is a cup and kit as well. We'll go through feeding in a little bit, but a cup and kit, which is exactly the same length as your top kit, allows you to feed unbelievably accurately. And that is why pole fishing is so good. You are literally dropping it on a tiny, tiny surface every time. And it is impossible to be that accurate with any other style of fishing. And that's why it's so effective. So there's a little bit of what pole to go for, what you can expect to get in a package. Let's have a look at getting set up and a few other bits you need to get yourself comfortable for a day's pole fishing. Right, so I've just got myself all nicely set up. And this is the next thing I wanna talk about before we get into the fishing side of it, is to get yourself nice and comfortable. I would advise if pole fishing to fish from a seat box, if not a chair without arms, because you've got nothing in the way as you're shipping in and out of poles. And the box just allows like loads of attachments, my side tray, my keep net, whatever you want, all in one place, which means you've not got to get up from the spot that you're fishing. And then the other thing, and really important, is pole rollers. Now I've got two set up because I'm fishing at 13 meters. If I was fishing anything shorter than that, maybe anything shorter than six meters, I'll say, you probably could get away with one. But I always say, you know, if you spend a lot of money on a nice pole, you want to be protecting it. If you're going to ship over gravel, stones, banks, and stuff like that, you're going to damage it and it's not going to last very long. So some nice pole rollers makes it really easy and a nice day's fishing and really important is how you set them up. So spend some time doing it, but you see, as I'm shipping out here, so the weight's gonna come off the back roller, and as the pole falls off the back roller, it doesn't get that nasty bounce, and the weight just then goes onto the front one, and we can ship out nicely. So having those set up so the weight doesn't bounce between them is really, really important. And the last thing I'll mention in this little section is how you hold the pole. Now, it will probably feel quite easy to start with, holding more like this but if you can get used to resting the pole across your knees your arm up to the butt section and it makes your hands free okay so you can now strike with your knee if you want you lift your left knee and that's the best way to hold a pole so it might take a little bit of getting used to but if you're then going to sort of start feeding with catapults and stuff like that your hands are free to do so and it just makes your fishing much much more effective so if you can sit comfortably with your legs nice and flat flat feet on the footplate 
lit knees at a right angle. There's not really much weight here now because it's across both of my legs and supported on my arm and it's really nice and comfortable. And then going back in reverse, obviously the pole roller is the same. So onto the front pole roller, you've got no weight transfer and now you can simply slide back all the way onto the second one and they're balanced out perfectly. So when I let go of my pole, when I'm playing my fish hopefully shortly, it sits there nice and safe. So that's a little bit about setting up, get it comfortable, get it right and spend some time doing it and you will enjoy it much more. So next we are gonna talk about the rigs and the way that you plumb your depth. Right, okay, so on to a little bit more fishing detail now and we're gonna start off with, I'm using my orange elastic. Now purely because I know the size of the fish in here are relatively small, a nice way to get into fishing and that's gonna cushion them perfectly. Now I haven't shown how to elasticate a top kit because that's quite a long process until you get used to it. So there's a link below to a dedicated video on exactly how to elasticate a top kit or if you buy the pole from any of our AD stores, they will elasticate it for you or you can take your pole in there and they will help you out. So that's the elastication bit out of the way. Next, we'll talk about connecting your rigs to the top kit. Now, I've got a Dacron connector on here. There's sort of two styles really that you'll see, a Dacron connector like this, or you will see a Stonflow connector with a little plastic collar with a hook on it and you just hook the loop of your pole rig onto there. But with a DAC one, you actually just lasso it on, and then it's sort of around the knot at the end, stays on there, connected nice and tight. And if you're wondering what these little tags are hanging at the end here, if you just pull those slightly, your rig comes off nice and easily at the end of the session. So that is purely just for a bit of speed. So let me just quickly connect that on again, and then we'll talk to you about pole rigs. Now, again, this is a quick video on the basics you need to pole fishing. So I'm not gonna talk you through how to tie a pole rig. But I will also include another pole, another link, sorry, in the description about how to tie a pole rig. But I will run it through what I've got. So float wise, I've got a F1 pellet, which is four by 14 in size. That's just a standard size for the depth of water that we're using. I've got 016 mainline, a strung out bulk of number eight shots onto a short little hook link, which is actually 014. So my hook link is always slightly lighter than my main line. So if anything is to go wrong, you hook fish, it's gonna break you or something like that. It's only your hook link you use, you just have to quickly loop one of those on. So it's really nice and straightforward if that happens. Now, before we get fishing, it's really important as well to know how deep your swim is. So a plummet is the best way to do that. So we whip one of those on like so, and we're now gonna ship out to our fishing spot. And I'm not saying you have to fish on the bottom, but knowing how deep it is, is a real, real edge, because you can then at least know if you wanna fish half depth or something like that, how deep you need to fish. But definitely you need to plumb the depth so you know how deep it is. So we're gonna ship out, and actually that's not far off, but this is where pole fishing is so accurate, because now, I've picked a far bank marker. So there is a pallet on the opposite side, but that's too big for a pole. You can be really, really accurate. So pick the leg of a pallet or something like that. And actually I'm going towards, there's a little floating buoy right in front of me and I can literally drop it right there every time. And I, within sort of a few centimeters, that rig and my feed, when we show you that in a minute, is gonna land there, but plumbing it up, you can see there it's a little bit over depth. So if my float completely disappeared, I need to pull my float up. And then on the vice versa, there, that's the plummet just on the bottom now. There's a bit too much of the float shown. So what I'm gonna do is quickly whip this pole back in. Like I said, all the rollers are set up nice and comfortably earlier, so we can slide straight back. I'm gonna put a few inches lower, and then we're gonna whip straight back out to that same spot. And what you're trying to achieve normally, I find a great starting point is just sort of half of the pole body, the float body and the bristle. So I'm actually there. There you go, look, I've gone a touch too far. So that now needs to go the other way. So we, we whip him and I'm gonna add on about two inches, I reckon. 
and we can do it. And I would spend a bit of time again getting this right. Everything with pole fishing, that's why it's so effective, is because it's so precise. So I'm back out into that marker. Now, hopefully, let's get this right. Bang, there we go. Half the body of the float and the bristle showing. And that is where I like to start my fish. Not saying, like I said, that's where you're gonna catch all your fish, but for me, a really good starting point. So that's your swim plumbed up. Now, we need to have a little look about how you feed it. So that is what we're gonna do next. We're gonna look at feeding your peg with a pole and just how accurate it really, really is. So now we are pretty much ready to get fishing, but in this little section, we're gonna talk through the feeding with a pole. And this is why it is unrivaled in its accuracy because it is so, so good. So like I talked about earlier, you get a cup and kit with most poles. If you don't, it's worth investing in a cup and kit so you can kick your session off with a little bit of bait. So I filled up just about a, a small handful in there really. I'm not gonna go too crazy. The weather unfortunately is getting a bit colder now. And then we take our time to nice and slowly, not spill any of that bait and ship out to our spot. Now, if you are getting used to fishing with poles, certainly as they get a bit longer, don't worry about if you drop a little bit out there. It is natural, it takes time to get used to, and you will get there, trust me on that one. So yeah, in your position where you're gonna be fishing, like I said, holding across my knees, this is my fishing position I'm in now. My arm is on the back of a pole rest, and I'm pointing at a little boy that I'm fishing. So all I'm now gonna do is rotate the pole round, and we can drop in that whole content on literally the smallest area that you can think of, really. And we can now come back, while that's gonna have a few seconds fishing, we can swap over to our rig, which again, everything is exactly the same length. Bait-wise today, I've only gone with pellets because I think we're gonna catch a fair few fish, to be honest with you. There's loads in here. So I'm just gonna put a soft hookable pellet on, but if you are getting into pole fish and you wanna make sure you have a real good day, pellets, maggots, and sweet corn, I'm gonna give you those free. If you take those, pretty much wherever you go, you're gonna catch fish. And then what we can do now is we can top up. I mean, you probably wouldn't need to because I've just put some bait in, but every cast, I've got a little toss pot on the end of my pole here. You can put a few pellets in there and you can tap those over the top of your rig as well. So not only have you got your pole cup that you're feeding with, you've then got the little toss pot on the end and you're dropping bait exactly the same spot every time. It is literally impossible to get it that accurate any other way. And the only other way you might find yourself feeding with catapult, but we're not gonna do it today, is the one that I slightly demonstrated earlier, and that is with a catapult. So we're now there, we've shipped out to the spot, nice and steady to make sure you don't spill any bait. And again, we've lowered the rig right on top of that boy. We're gonna tip the pole round, give it a little tap for the pellets to come out. And then we are now fishing away. So hopefully it's not gonna to be too long until we can talk you through how to play a fish effectively on the pole. And there we go, a nice little bite, just a gentle lift up with the knees for the strike, nothing too complicated. Now we can talk about playing them and if you're not used to a pole, it might be quite bizarre because you haven't got your rod and reel to reel them in, but basically the elastic does that for you. And all you do is take your time, do what I'm doing now, slowly ship back onto your two rollers until you get to your top kit and then break down at your top. If you can go all the way to your top kit, it's much better and much quicker. And then most top kits now have a puller bung, which you can give it a couple of strips and then you trap it against the pole just so you can fish lighter elastics and then catch all sorts of different size fish. And then it's just a case of when they're ready. This one's going mental now, right on the rod tip. There we go, a quick scoop and we are in. And there we go, a little common. It's gonna be quite lively, I think, but that is really, really good. And how effective pole fishing is, is amazing because all we need to do now basically is repeat that exact same process. So I'm just gonna pop that one in the net and I'm gonna go out there again. And the better, or the more you do it, and the more fish you catch, 
hopefully the better your swim will get because you're putting bait right on top of that same spot every time. So we can put a few more pellets in the toss pot. And like I said, if you are a bit shaky to start with, if you just dampen those pellets down slightly, they will stay in that toss spot a lot better. So take your time again, ship out to that exact same marker. Like I said, that little boy, that's how accurate I can be. Pick something small, right to the end, getting your fishing position, tap those pellets out, and there you go. Another trap is pretty much set. So I'm gonna fish away now for probably 20 minutes, half an hour, catch a few fish, put that into practice, and see if the day gets better and better as we go along. Well, there we go, one to finish on. It's been, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, really good fishing, one pretty much every cast. And I would say if you are going somewhere to learn how to pole fish, go somewhere you're gonna catch plenty of fish because it's about repetition, getting it nice and smooth, and the more you practice it, the better and easier it becomes. But there we go, a nice, nice little one to finish on. It's been good fun a few minutes and it makes you realize just how effective pole fishing is. So hopefully if you are looking to get into it, there's some tips to help you along the way. And obviously don't forget, drop us a comment of what the next category you'd like us to cover in the learn to fish section.